you have this amalgamation of players that come from all kinds of games. This is a dream scenario in my eyes. It's like really cool to see new players come and compete against me. Valorant's just getting started. I like that. Welcome to my world. It's now time to see who actually wants this more. And in terms of like the road to get here, these players have brought everything to this tournament. It's all about to go down. It was intense, to say the least. These guys are looking so damn good right now. What a play from Sean. What? What's up with it? I'm going to run in, and I'm going to kill your whole team. <laughs> the mega trigger discipline. Oh, that patience paying dividends. Oh, my word. Yes. Stop it. This is what we came here for. How has he managed to do that? Look, I'm just going to say it. If that video doesn't hype you up, then you are watching the wrong broadcast. I get goosebumps <laughs> watching those videos. I get so hyped whenever we get to see what the Riot team is cooking up with their video pieces. This is day three of the NA Masters. My name is Bach. I'll be your host throughout the show. Joining me on the broadcast, we've got Van Silly Potter and Veli. Veli. Coming into day three, it's elimination day. The first what? chance for some of these teams to potentially be knocked out of the tournament. This is the day that I've been waiting for this whole time. Yeah, people were excited to see Tins play with Sins and everybody else show off day one and day two. But today, both matches, the loser goes home and the stakes are higher than they've ever been. So for Xset, Genji, Luminosity, and Immortals, they gotta bring their A-game or this is gonna be the end of the road. But... We're not the only region that's live. We are live currently around the globe with each region running their Masters tournament at the same time. And Riot cooked up another little juicy nugget of a video to recap the last few days of action. Let's take a look. Let's be real. Valorant fans, they love NA. And as an NA fan, I gotta be honest, it's about time. All of our esports <laughs> scenes suck. I feel like all these esports <laughs> scenes that we've been following for years, NA always gets trounced by Europeans, by Korea. So it's nice to be on top, even if it's only in our heads, because international competition hasn't it's exactly not our started yet. It's I real mean, life, Bog. NA is the only reason that matters here, okay? You take a look at Europe and everyone else out there. I can't wait until that Iceland land comes to, like, real life because we're going to see what the best is in the world. And I'm a feeling, you know, Sentinels, TSM, and all of them, we're going to be on top, man. Well, looking at teams who haven't had the best run, NA teams who have been struggling, we'll take a look at the bracket so we can see the matches that are actually going to be coming up today as it's an unfortunate time for all of these teams because it's potentially elimination on the line. We've got Xset versus Gen G first. Gen G getting knocked down by Envy. They kept it close in a three map series. Xset kind of got bodied by FaZe. And then the other match, we've got Immortals and Luminosity. Luminosity falling in again a close series to Sentinels. It was a bit odd back and forth, but we saw that Tens highlight reel at times throughout that match. And then 100 Thieves looked really good against Immortals, but it was still a close game, even though it was a 2-0. There was a reality where that could have gone three maps. And even, I think Sean said it at one point, there was a world where Immortals could have won those maps and taken it 2-0 themselves. Yeah. It was like that any given Sunday factor. It was just a few rounds separating those games from going a different direction. But looking at this first game, Alex, we're looking at Xset versus Gen G. What, what is your gut telling you right off the bat? 
Uh, my gut is telling me that it's going to be a tough matchup for Exit, unfortunately. Um, I, Of course, it's been one side of her phase, but I can't discredit anything from Exit to have made it this far too, right? You look at the other teams that didn't make it into the Masters, that didn't qualify. The TSMs, the Cloud9, uh, mm. the energies of the world, they didn't make it. And you're, you're seeing right now that Exit, they've had a good run. They've made it here. But it seems as though they're, they're lacking just a little bit of something to be able to move forward later in the stages of the Masters. And yesterday, it was it was proof of that. Christine, you were talking about it. You know, you you look at these two teams. What exactly went wrong for Xset and Gen G in their opening matches throughout the week? Yeah, it's it's tough to say. Both teams lost to such different kinds of aggression. For the exit yeah. side of things, they hardly got to play the game at all mm. yesterday. <laughs> Baby Babe was in their face every step of the way from the beginning. They had that breach and that composition, and it just seemed like Exit didn't have an answer. And if they did have it, they didn't get to play it out, right? So today, they need to have a bit of a better start so that they can actually get themselves into the rhythm, get into the groove of these rounds, and figure out what their strengths are for that match set and for Gen G side of things, it was that mid-round aggression coming up from MB, right? Food, crashies, always mm -hmm, in their face, mm -hmm. right in the perfect timing. So for Gen G, I think they should have a better look again today in those mid-rounds because their defaults, it was looking good, right? If we think back yesterday, they were up six to two on that Haven in particular and lost out all the rounds thereafter. So I think both squads, they had different kinds of issues, but it all stemmed down to the aggression. They didn't have an answer. Their protocols weren't quite strong enough. I, I just feel that together though, matching Xset versus Gen G, we will definitely see a closer game from both of these teams. Just because the play style seems, it seems to match Xset a little bit better uh, when they're gonna face against Gen G, because if we watched them versus phase yesterday, they like to move as a four-man team, a five-man team, rush into the site and try to trade things off. And versus a team like Gen G, I feel that they have better trading opportunities than they did versus phase yesterday. Looking at Xset's lineup, we'll pull that up in just a second. We had originally profiled Pure when we were coming into their first game, but it felt like Pure never really got a chance to play. Like you were saying, Christine, kind of their mm. offensive side got yeah. deleted by the aggressive defensive side that is phase. And then on attack, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> so now looking at this roster, we have to figure out who we're going to kind of profile as the player to match. And Veli, in your mind, it's going to be easy. your boy We Did. It's easy. It's going to be all about we did. When you look at games, so I always say, and I, I still hold on to it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a shooting game. You got to just kill people, right, to win. But you take a look at players like we did, and players like him, individuals like him make teams special. It isn't always about stellar individual performances. It's also about what you can do to put your team in a position to win. When you take a look at maps like Vine, where they didn't even have a chance to do it yesterday because... They got steamrolled, right? We did is the support player that you need on your team. When he gets his kills, they're coming off of some really good quality trades. You look at Vine and the way he uses his abilities, his omen to open up paths for his teammate. Look at A Short. He will send both of his duelists out to look at each lane. And whichever one sees somebody, he's going to be there for the trade. Now, when his jet goes to showers for op control and for showers control, he's going to be there to not only back him up, but to also look at the A Short push to make sure Aaron's going to be okay in U-Haul. We did as the ultimate, excuse me, the ultimate team player on this roster, and I'm really expecting him to have a way better game this time around compared to last time. Now, looking at their opposition, the team they're going to be facing off against, we'll pull up Gen G's roster here. We have talked about this team and how they had a bit of a honeymoon period after Sean joined the roster. Sean really stepped things up, and everything seemed like, oh my gosh, Gen G could be a legit top five threat. Then, silly, something happened there in the meantime. And things kind of dipped down. And now we're looking at other players on this roster to potentially step up. One of them being GMD or Gimon. Yeah, exactly. GMD or Gimon is going to be that person for me as well. The addition of Kusta was another great addition to Gen G. Yeah. And we mentioned it time and time again. Oh, no, I caught myself Oh, you did it. Oh, for did the it. first Observers, time Observers, get the spreadsheet out. Oh. MC put a check e next to as the coach. <laughs> MC he is said a, it. I'm going to turn the page. MC is the coach right now. <laughs> has added so much to the team as well for Gen G. But Gimon, let's focus on him right now. We didn't talk about him yesterday. But in his series, he was pretty much top fracking the whole series as well versus Envy. And he's the type of person, as an IGL, that is still able to anchor sites and also turn rounds over uh, and take rounds into his matter to make things a little bit easier for his team for the retake. So I think uh, GMD is going to be one of those players that's going to 
right off that hype of how he played yesterday and continue forward throughout this bracket. You know what? I actually slid in that man's DMs this morning, and I said, yo, be honest <laughs> with me. You can keep it simple if you want to, but going against this team this morning, what's going to be the game plan? He said, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple. They're very aggressive, and I think that fits better for our play style. And the reason why GMD popped off, and I hope it happens again today, his flanks are so creative, and it's so unexpected, so I think he could have a good time as well. Here's the thing, too. Gen G may have backslid a bit in the rankings. When we look at the early stages of, like, beta play, for instance, Gen G was a top five contender, but they've slowly oh, yeah. slipped down in the ranks. They made some roster changes, but at the end of the day, they're still here. Mm -hmm. And other teams that might be ahead of them in even the community's minds or even on ranking charts' minds, they're not. So shout out to Gen G for the resiliency to continue to fight despite the fact that maybe the community is doubting this roster a little bit. And I do think ultimately they have a bit of an upper hand here, but what's gonna matter most in illustrating that upper hand is the map pool. Where are we going to be heading for this series? Where is this battle going to start? You know, when you look at the map pool and the history between these two teams, Gen.G has had Xset's number historically. They've only really played a few times, but Gen.G has beaten them down both of those occasions. Potter, do you think that maybe the map pool can give Xset a, more of a fighting chance, or do we feel like this is mostly Gen.G series to lose? Oof, that's a tough question. You know, a lot of questions are up in the air. If we just think back, the two newest members in BCJ yeah. uh, and Kusta, these two teams haven't met face-to-face -face since that happened early on in January earlier this year. So I think still both teams are questioning that. We've seen these teams testing things out. We saw Sage for Huynh yesterday as well. So mm -hmm. I think some experimentation process, some growing pains are to be expected. We talk about Xset doing leaps and bounds, skyrocketing up in the ranks, and do they deserve to be here? You know, that this is the kind of series, this is the kind of match for them to make a statement. So I'm excited. I'm not really sure what to expect here though, Buck. Man, silly. We, we will pull up the maps here in just a second. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll show you guys on stream, but we do know what they are in the background. Looking at the pool that we've got for these teams without giving any spoilers away to the community. <laughs> do yeah, you just... see like a fighting chance, like a potential three map series for Xset? I do see a potential live after all. Actually, uh, once we get the, the screen for the maps, there is there is a possibility that you may have uh, a, an upset pick. The, the reason why is because Gen G picked a map that they haven't been playing so well lately, and then Xset did the same thing. So there's a potential that what, what have they prepared going into these maps today that's going to help them have a better result in their very old map pick. But going back to that history, as you mentioned, Bot, they've only played a few times before. The last time that these two teams met, it was maybe around December uh, when it was like a, like a tier two event where it was Gen G that had their number. But then again, a different roster. They had player one in there. And for Xset, they also had Brando in that roster too. So they've had similar upgrades in terms of uh, new players coming in in Kusta and also in BCJ. And now we get to see this map, uh, the map series. And Ascent is the map chosen by Gen G, as I mentioned before, where they didn't have that many good results results into here but uh, and then exit uh, have had better games uh, i'm notably wins i think against envy and lg on this map too wow uh, that's some big wins when you look at the fact that envy came into this as the number one seed and honestly is looked at as potentially the, the team to win the tournament yep. obviously there's some arguments about some of the that's other what van silly says beating. that's what van silly <laughs> says van silly's got them picked some of oh, us yeah. say 100 thieves some of us say sentinels that's the beauty of where we're at right now in na valorant is that we have so many teams fighting for that top position and it's not really solidified who deserves it the most there is no easy leader on the leaderboards there's no one really carrying the torch for all of north america like there may have been at one point in time going back a bit looking at the early days when tsm was number one sentinels wasn't even really in the uh, conversation because sentinels was still really figuring things out with that roster then they started to click we got a nice little rivalry built up at the top end and tsm oh, yeah. kind of dropped off since then which is a bit disappointing and hopefully we'll see them competing in the next stage of masters but before we jump into the action as always gotta ask you guys where are we going with this series veli we'll start with you what's your prediction my prediction is going to be Gen G. It's going to be a 2-1. Um, the map pool is going to be evil, excuse me, even on all sides. I can't talk today, man. <laughs> I feel like the difference maker in this game is going to be Sean. You take a look at Haven, and I think that that Envy match could have gone either way. Sean was really unlucky. Four out of six rounds in the first half, he was a first blood. And I think if that didn't happen, things would have been a lot different. So I think Gen G are going to look good, and they're going to be prepared for this. Potter? 
Hmm. I'm gonna keep it simple, keep it short. I'm going Gen G. I'm. I think Gen G should win this 2-0. Unless Exit just do a complete 180 from what they showcased <laughs> yesterday, I think Gen G should have this one in the bag. I echo those sentiments too. 2-0 for Gen G. If if we have the same type of of performance uh, for Exit from yesterday, it's not gonna be an easy matchup. Hot take box. You gonna you gonna take Exit or you you rocking with us, man? I feel like I might actually. Um, and hear me <laughs> out. It. Hear me it. out. I'm going to say X set 2 1. And the reason okay. I'm going to say that is okay. I think that X set's going to come out swinging way faster and way harder than anyone anticipates them to. Mm. And as a result, we're going to see X set maybe keep a close map on map one or even take map one. Really surprise people. And they're going to get in the heads of Gen G. We also have a Gen G who has largely had inconsistent results. One week they look amazing, the next week, not the same. They're very hot and cold. And while you could make the same arguments about X set, I think ultimately this roster has the potential to pull out a big upset here and knock Gen G out of the tournament. Definitely. But before I get ahead of myself and start illustrating storylines that haven't even happened yet, let's throw it over to the casters who are standing by on the desk to take us into the action. It's DDK and Riv. It's all yours. Bach put himself on the block there with the 2-1. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. I'm sure the XSET fans definitely want to see that third game. Rivington here with DDK, and we're about to get back into Valorant Masters NA action. And honestly, if, if they can get to bind, that would be amazing for them. I think Sean said it best yesterday when XSET was approaching the old phase and they weren't able to adapt. So a little adaptation here in the series, and I think we can see XSET go a long way. Totally agree. I think, you know, compared to that phase matchup, I think we're going to see Xset playing a team, playing a style of Valorant that they're going to be much more comfortable with. Yeah. That's not going to feel like you're getting kind of dominated and crushed on just the, all of these fights and just like these really, this in this really aggressive play style. But they'll be up against a Gen G, a team that is very structured and likes to play the mid round, likes to play the late yeah. round. So there'll be a lot more to, for Xset to offer tactically in a game like this. So I think they should find their footing much better today. Absolutely. And coming into this, a little bit refreshed, understanding the competition. We did see some great plays from Xset coming out. Uh, Gen G as well, putting up such a good fight in their best of three versus Envy to start off in the upper bracket. Did find themselves in this position now, and both teams gunning to keep themselves in the competition. Let's see what we got for Agent Select then. Yeah, so, so far, so good. I think you know, seeing Sean on the Reina is going to be uh, really awesome. I think it was Veli that mentioned, you know, Sean being a key piece in Genji's success mm -hmm. and being on that Reina, you can obviously be the leader in a lot of earlier on aggression, especially on the defensive side. I think that's something that's really key is not allowing a team to, and especially a tactical team like Exad, to really get too much for free and allow them to get comfortable in their defaults. And so having someone like Sean to disrupt is going to be really key. And we also know that Genji loves to, uh, on their defense, use the GMD and Mikael as well to set up a lot of A main control. So that's another yeah. point of focus, I think, going in to this. And Omen and Sova, you know, always just classic picks from those guys. And it's always a strong, strong look uh, on this map. So uh, that, that's that's the, where I initially gonna, I'm going to put the focus. I think A main control is going to be a pretty big deal in this in this game. Absolutely. I mean, you get Sean or Quinn going up on those alt orbs are pretty easy to get out towards with that uh, kind of trait in the fight that you'll be getting from X set. And we'll have to see how they distribute uh, their kind of utility, their defense. It's always interesting to see if they put all that utility to get back into the site like Rays and Cypher somewhere else. And A is held by kind of that blind and find utility, what would be Omen and Jet Smokes maybe on Cat to get in. Interesting to always see how they set it up. Xset looking to bounce back today, oh, and they're going to have to if they want to keep in this tournament. Some nice setups by Thwaifo here, and we are going to get into game. I'm excited. I, You know, the break between each day is actually too much. We just need to cut some more hours out of the day <laughs> so we can get right back into the action. A lot of focus towards AD here to start off for Gen G. Let's see what they uh, come up with here on the first round with just a GMD on tiles. Indeed, Xset on that defense. Looking to be pretty passive so far. Had that tree control and not really wasting time is Gen G moving up towards mid pretty quickly as well. They have that cap pressure uh, also possible. It's looking to us like it might very well be an A split, but they do are leaving themselves the options to go back quickly for a mid rotation. If they pull the defenders towards this A side and they're able to actually just 
already make their way into the site, actually. So it's looking pretty good for Exeter. They're not trying to commit, overcommit for Jules just yet. They're trying to come in all together. And so far, Ooh. it's not going to work out too well, Rim. But, you know, I thought initially Exeter there was had a pretty good rotation, understanding the smoke could have been a fake from Gamon from mid. And then they get into the site, and the trades are so in favor of Gen G. 4v1, BCJ doing what he can with a little bit of uh, dart work. One more left in the rounds, or in the chamber, rather, as he reloads. And now just on to try and tag a few heads here and get a few laser shots to end the round. He's going to toy with them, but he's going to be hunted down here. Everybody coming from that tree garden area now through the window. Up oh, above, it's going to be enough from Michael as he drops down and gets himself a sheriff. So first round for Gen G. We'll see if they uh, give some respect here to maybe a possible shorty buy or a possible eco buy here from Xset. And how fast, fast they rush this. Yeah, and, and it's, this is a difficult one too because at first I thought that the setup from Xset was yeah. to not necessarily challenge, just really hold on to tree control. But if they wanted to just go straight to site, let them, and then sort of wait it out, coordinate for a full retake. But they got kind of caught in some battles in the middle and it got a little bit chaotic. But you know, such is the way of pistols. They, of course, will be on the eco now. So we'll see if they can get any damage. Of course, when you're on the eco, you're not necessarily looking at trying to win rounds you might try to have smaller goals like trying to get a couple kills steal away some weapons and then see what you can do once you know you get into the mid round if that first sort of phase is successful and yeah here we can see a stack towards b and this stacking sites is definitely is something that exit really loves to do and i'm sure we're going to see a lot of that even in the gun rounds exit a bit short on util they're not going to throw everything into that right now on a save round so a little advantage to Gen G, and I love just overall teams that take control of mid. It's so powerful on ascent. The crossfire here, they're going to find one. Wipeo tries to get out of this situation, but he's going to be run down, gunned down as they see the stack is towards the B site. And we did coming up with a classic there. They're going to be possibly able to grab that specter and make a move here onto the site to do some economy damage to Gen G. Yeah, and it'd be really cool to see if they've got any sort of exit strategies here. Unfortunately. I, you know, there's so much control for Exit right now. They know what's safe, so they can always fall back if things get a little bit dicey. Yeah. And and you can see Win there is able to spot basically everybody. And they're actually going to force it all the way in here. So they are going to force Exit, or rather Genji, to have to take some fights. Nice opener from Pura, but looks like things will be calming down here as these weapons are just too good for Genji. And Exit, I think they, they, they have to be happy with that. Three kills, I think. You, can definitely be very pleased to get that much damage in with a round like that. Oh, there's the Odin coming out already from BCJ. He's going to take that over to B, see if he can start off some rounds. And yeah, you're right. The weapon's too much. Genji getting a bit of positioning there to start off. And Xset all coming from spawn. So you're not going to be able to really get too much of a flank on or have them looking at different angles on your entry. Quick rounds as we expected after the first one, or quick round, I should say. Now it's weapons in the hands of Xset. What can they do? We did see the impact rounds against FaZe for a few once they were figuring out the aggression, moving forward, grabbing info right away. So sitting on their heels here won't do them any good. Genji's already into that A main, as you were saying, Dan. Control over this orb's gonna be big, and that puts Win two away from ultimate. Yeah, they're gonna prioritize it on him instead of Mikhail, and mm -hmm. that's interesting, but we'll see whether or not this retake setup is gonna work out because the site's been completely given to Xset. And I think that's quite smart, given that Xset are on these, these weapons that are gonna be really good close range, but if some of these longer fights aren't gonna work out as well. I think the retake play works here, but we'll see if they can make it happen. Sean is going aggressive for tree control. The trades are through though. So Xset, we did, it's just owning them right now. Three kills from him, and that's gonna leave just win. In a, with a Bucky, but that said, we, can, we all know how much damage the Bucky can do. Steel, as Steel likes to remind us, pretty consistently, but it will be a great retake or well, after all is said and done. But it, it looks like one of those spots also where I think Gen G are pretty happy considering how much damage they did. They got the spike down, yep. and it was a bonus round. Yeah, you're not going to be mad about that. An extra 300 in the pocket all around. We'll see what their buy is here. And still leaving a few on a thousand full utility all around. So let's see if they do actually take some damage over here at B. You made a mention of the Mikhail not getting that Hunter's Fury. He does have it this round. Now wins on deck for his ult. We also have Aaron on the other side waiting there with From the Shadows on We Did. So a few that could be utilized here pretty early. We're only on round four. We're seeing ultimates pop up. That's what you love to see. It could help really control these first or second buy rounds. As we start off, Paint Shell's dodged out. By Huynh's quick dash. 
And he'll be able to set up here back by Gelato. It doesn't look like they're going to want anything here at A. Feeling out what XF wants right now. I'm still thinking Gen G is going to send a few towards mid just to get that broken up again, not allow the rotation to be so easy. And they're already starting to encroach on that position. Yeah, very fast mid take from Gen G. And the door is down. So, in terms of the information game, although there is position here now for Gen G. They would have to give up the game, perhaps, to you know break the door, create some pressure. That would mm -hmm. definitely cause some rotations from A. So they've got to be set up before they make that move. And they have just made that move. The door is down, and they're starting to pressure the B site. The defender rotation is coming. But can Genji take the site in time before it gets there? And they're not going too quickly. They're actually holding their ground. They are counting on the defender rotation, and they want to punish it. But I'm not sure how well this is going to go. Mikhail wow. will be able to take down one on the flank. But now they're moving in, and the defenders are ready to go. Oh, yeah, already into the side, I would have said at that point, he's still in main, start rotating over with that rotation. You hear the Odin in the back, <laughs> trying to find him. Well, XX trying to clean it up right now, as it was such a scatter within the site. What a round coming up there for BCJ to stay alive. Dead to rights, really, as Gen G was coming in, and they just get wiped out. Yeah, it, it was interesting because it looked like Genji was setting up, like we said, with the door down. As soon as they break that door, right. the rotation from A with three players um, on the side of exit are going to rotate. So either you try to rush in at that point um, because you can get a timing advantage to get like a five versus two on the B site. Or the other thing that they did was they just waited because they wanted to seemingly punish the rotation. And that didn't really work out for them. So we'll have to see if they'll adjust their maneuvers like that if they run that run again in the future. But for now... It's, uh, it's definitely a great start for Xset, who are doing yeah. really well in their retakes, and they're starting to build some money, and it feels like they're in the driving seat now. Quick tech pause as Gen G re gets, uh, re gets, <laughs> restarts comms, and gets those up and running once again. Kind of imperative to have uh, as we get back into this one. And yeah, looking at that, I, you know, Dan, I almost called that Xset was giving up too much room, right? I, obviously, they closed door. They know they're playing a bit of a retake if mid is left alone. But with what Gen G is able to do with space like that, moving up with Guaman, able to just make moves, you have to be careful. They were ready, and they kind of are, are adapting to knowing Gen G is going to want to push mid, doing their homework. Definitely, and it's interesting too because I think if. If Genji slow the game down too much, I think Xset might be quite difficult to read because, mm -hmm. again, as, as mentioned before, they're a team that will use the the Sentinels like you know, Sova and, although I guess Sova is technically an initiator, but and Cypher as well <laughs> uh, to get that information early round and then use that to kind of, you know, they're not too shy to just gamble off that information. You know, some teams would want to get more information to actually genuinely have enough pieces to kind of put together. Okay, our opponents are doing, you know, this. Right. Um, but in, but usually when you do that as a defenders, you're also telling the attackers information about what your setups look like. So it's, it's always going to be a trade-off. And Exit like to play the stacking gameplay where they will get that info early and then try to just stack yeah. off of it, like gamble off of it. So we'll see if, if that's what they'll continue to do against Gen G here. Um, I think this is a round that will give us a clue um, as to whether they're going to approach with that style of play. So all that info, and yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit before to see how they, either team on defense, would play kind of retake potential. This would be, if everyone A waits, and it's an A take, all of your utility, as you said, the Sova, the Cypher, to retake. That makes it really effective when you want to get raise nades in there, if they're still alive. And then the other side is going to be all of the damage. Sova, Cypher are going to have to back up. You're still going to have that util, but it's just a matter of how you want to play it, how you're going to feel comfortable coming in with that utility, with that power play. Still waiting on this as they get comms raring and going. And it looks like a hover towards it. Anything can happen this round. But uh, it has been kind of the A, A, like you said, focus on the main, back up, figure out what's going on, at least a few mid to cut off quick rotations and market control. And uh, Genji has been happy with that. XSEC figuring it out now a few rounds in as we start to get to those weapons. Yeah, and it does already, as you mentioned, that you're using like the word retake, and it does really feel like Exit very comfortable with that style of play, and mm -hmm. that is kind of to the nature of the stacking gameplay, where you're where you're saying, okay, if you come into our stack, obviously we're going to fight for it, and we have a really strong chance to defend. If you go elsewhere, well, we have all the retake setups, so it, that's how we like to play. We're drilled in how we do that, so we're yeah. comfortable no matter what happens. 
and we can play against teams that are really good at denying information. And instead of feeling the pressure a lot of, because a lot of teams on the defense, it's all about trying to fight for that information and, and an attacking default is all about taking information away from the defenders. So if, if the, your attacking team is really effective in their defaults, you feel really uncomfortable because you don't know how to make a good decision. You just don't have the information to do it. Yeah. But Xset seem to be, in, again, in the style of play that they have on this map, really comfortable against teams that are successful in denial of information. So it's uh, that's that's really good. And um, one extra point, actually, uh, Riv, is that... Hit it. Genji is a team that does really well against pretty much everyone. Um, and I think against the top teams, they tend to seem to, there's like a hump that they struggle to get over yeah. when they have these leads. And and so Exa is a team where I think Genji are going to be more comfortable um, to, to like play their best. So that, that doesn't really work out well in Exa's favor, but <laughs> as we discussed before, at least Exa will be much more comfortable playing a Genji than a FaZe. No, that's absolutely true. Genji kind of has that uh, play to the level of your opponent if you're if they're kind of like the envy, and then Genji are playing their game, which might, like you say, allow X at, uh, a chip at that armor. And right now, back and forth, punch for punch here is upset. Do figure that out. And again, a question that I had coming in here, you know, uh, with them playing against Phase and not being able to iterate from map to map and fall to the aggression, what would happen if they, you know, ebb and flow against? Uh, I was. I want to say just GMD against Genji um, during this game to make sure they always have control. They always have advantage, and they're not kind of forced buying on rounds that will, if a loss, cause them to lose another two in a row. Looks like it is going to be a bit of an A strat over as we're getting a little bit more motion. I think we're still hanging though. They're they're trolling us. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder. Uh, I was like, it's yeah, actually really go. funny because. It's like you have like the clock there and like the time has stopped. Like I really wonder like what's going on in, in like the lore of this world as well. Cause obviously the time is literally stopped. All of the buildings are like somehow exploding, but not yeah. moving. So um, uh, I'm curious, like once we get more insight into the actual lore behind this game, like what it all means. I'd say, what does I, it all I mean? guess that's a property of Radianite in its like explosive mm. form. Maybe whatever is uh, surrounding it. I don't know. I guess that would be really cool though. If, if you were like, stuck and frozen in time if you were caught in the bomb radius then the spike radius right and then you're kind uh. of evaporated as it comes back in i don't know i'm just spitballing here i like it though <laughs> it's better I mean, than we got anything pizza. I have, we so. got we got perpetually hot steaming pizza over here in market Ooh. anything is possible that's a that is a that's a plus of yeah. kind of standing still maybe that's a property like right at night as well it keeps all your food warm <laughs> Nice. Why is why are people trying to take this away? Uh, what what even is that? Is that a pepperoni piece? Then? I think so. It looks kind of like an everything. I see some, some banana peppers on, on there. A little nice. tang would be delicious. Uh, still waiting on the tech pause. If you're just coming in, we are on the lower bracket games. This is fighting for your life in Valorant NA Masters, except versus Gen G. And right now we're just a few rounds in. They're both teams kind of going punch for punch here. BCJ, you can see him. He's he, like, you buy an Odin and you're just made to wait. You know he wants to just unload that. And every time I hear somebody unloading an Odin, I just imagine like kind of this Rambo yell going on in their head. You know, just this <laughs> fierce face and they're just screaming out loud. It is such a strong oh, weapon on the B site. Oh, I didn't actually know that was that. That's pretty sick. <laughs> every so many time. little Easter eggs. It is. And... It's so much fun to use on B. But yeah, it... It's interesting too because uh, Sova's playing that style has come in and out of the meta, and it's just cool to see that it's just strong. It is strong, so it's, you just have to know how to deal with it. But you know, enough about that. I think we are going back into the game shortly. It does look like we're going to see a an a main start or control play to start off with coming in from Genji. So we'll have to see what exactly Xset have. They don't look like they they actually want to contest it. They're playing pretty far back on the A site. Got the knives out for win as well. To start things off and it's gonna make his way up catwalk here so yeah it looks like they just want to go for an a split here this would be such a big round if the blade storm comes up with just even at least a few and then damage to tag on after the frenzies could follow up easily and they do have a bit of a split as you were saying they're getting ready for the paranoia smoke coming in from the right side alt orb as they push in aaron comes up with one win will be able to capitalize on one he's still alive and roaming the site i don't think we did knows it already gets taken down 
beautifully done by Huynh, but Pure Spike Earth Rifle coming in huge eight. to take down the two that were making the impact frags for Gen G. Yeah, great stuff there from XL once again. Sort of reading the round nicely, you know, showing that they're very comfortable to give up the site. They knew that it would, uh, they knew the economy of their yeah. opponents. They knew exactly what was going to be bought pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so he's just playing passive. So pretty standard stuff there. And it, you know, we're going into the next buy round. And I'm curious, you know, last time we saw Gen G just going for like the walk in mid and setting up a B split, it was pretty straightforward. I wonder if we'll see a different take from them here. But, you know, we actually see Xset looking like they want to challenge mid at the beginning of the round. So. That's going to be interesting because that could really disrupt what Genji is doing. Yep, here we go. Called it straight out. Showstopper tile sees him, gets him. Nailing the coffin on Sean. And Craig coming in this round. Sean did have Empress up and could have been changing things up from tiles on this buy. And now, come on, push back. GMD looking for some shots over towards B, knowing. They got to play a little sweaty now on the fly from what they wanted to do at the beginning of the round as Spike makes its way over towards that B site. And you still have Quinn in mid. What a scary round. Yeah. <laughs> from the shadows from we did as well. We didn't even catch that. And that's that's created so many problems. Genji heavily disrupted now. Have to find a way to get a pick. And Wynn's the only one who will find success there. And Michael as well is going to be trying to rotate around to be able to join forces to get in towards a with that spike but it's going to require win to do a lot and he is so in so much trouble here on the catwalk he's out in the open paint shells out gets sprayed down by bcj and for michael really now it's all just about getting some damage and it's looking very grim indeed xset they ha they're causing a lot of problems left. and i love to see the fact that they aren't just trying to play passive they are yeah. showing a lot of confidence using their ults and creating a lot of disruption. I'm right there with you. This round made me a uh, smile on my face to see him go out hard, as well as Aaron playing that so smart. You know, 2 HP doesn't mean, left. hey, I'm going to go find more and do things. He played such good sentry, figuring out where more were, drawing pressure. BCJ was able to capitalize on someone firing back at him at tiles. And just with 2 HP, doing so much more than just kind of ending the round with finding someone else. You love to see that, the smart play. And now 3 to accept. Feeling good. Definitely. And Actually, 4-2, it, because it's round 7. I think we're missing the next set round. It feels like, as well, Genji haven't been able to really run their default. And that's kind of a that's a big problem because one of the elements of doing that is that you're able to kind of set the pace and the tempo and the defend, you're conditioning the defenders over time, which allows you to get a lot more of an understanding as yeah. to how to get your advantages and how to play with the defender rotation. But right now, it's actually Xset that it feels like they're calling the shots. And that's not really how it's supposed to work out. So Genji are in quite a desperate position. Win has the, the Vandal, but overall, not a great look on the weaponry for them. And yeah. once again, looking for that B split. They found my nice wire. checks. They know mains open for now. And that might be their time to move in. They're still playing it very patient. Bob Spike's going over to Tiles. Aaron with nice frag. Another one towards Market. So they know they got to be watching mid a little bit. Oh, no way, Aaron. <laughs> Switching back and forth doesn't even know which one he wants to be taking people down with, and it doesn't even matter. Great play, two rounds in a row. He's definitely feeling it. That feels bad, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's that's a rough one. Well, still plenty of rounds to play out in this first half. Last player standing. <laughs> and the Odin. It's so much fun on the B site in this map. <laughs> Aaron finishing it off. Great stuff from him. And well, again, just as I said, you know, previously, it really feels like Xset is dictating mm -hmm. everything right now. And, you know, Genji going for that B split that previously, you know, they used on a buy round also didn't work out too well. Would really like to see something different now from them. Trying to play like a slower round, trying to play more more control, maybe try to start off with a main control. In terms of the the alt economy, though, as far as Gen G are concerned, they have pretty much everything. So lockdown is available. If they have any set pieces that they that they have in the books, that you know the the, the playbook, now might be a good time for that. Yep. 
So may, you know, try to go within a, a rotation window that you're firing off. They're going to try to get mid control here. And that's a precedent, right? A few rounds in a row, you're going to see Xset pushing out. Now the drone's usage is for mid to see if they even have to push or worry about it. Cat's going to be the play for now as they head up towards the tree area. And this is going to be a slow push in. Aaron in a dangerous spot when you know people are coming, backing off. Maybe the play, and he does get himself into an advantageous position, but still found by GMD as they look to take a site. Great stuff here from Genji. We just on the site though, still alive and kicking, but Sean will be able to deal with him. So that is, that's the biggest problem now in this round dealt with. That was the, the major chance for some kind of a comeback in this one for X set. For Thwaifu and BCJ, it's going to be quite difficult indeed. Always nice though, you know, with having a server in this spot, there's lots you can do with the arrows. Yeah. You, can get the, you can bang those shot darts into hell pretty easily. The recon, the Odin, it's, it's definitely strong, but this is a lot to ask from BCJ, and they are giving him full respect. Pete comes in, as they know that he'd be forced to check for that recon, and Fyfo not really able to do much from this position. And, and this round actually could have definitely gone quite poorly for Gen G. Exit were kind of expecting uh, either a lockdown play or something yeah. of that nature, a rush. They were playing a defensive setup. If, they, if Gen G were not as successful against Aaron here on tree, then if, if Aaron's able to buy time with his pain shells, maybe get a kill, I think Exit have a very strong chance to retake this. We got a lot of ultimates coming up in this next round. That should be an alt frenzy on this, honestly. Do we see A being the, the option here? No. They, and I think they know that Gwyn's going to fight for that alt orb, so you see how many from Exit right now are about to come out of that A side, making sure no one's there. And we'll see what alts get activated first. Hovering around Michael, uh, Mikhail rather again towards market with that drone. Everybody avoids a little bit of that spam coming from the Odin as uh, BCJ looks to tag a few. Oh, pull on Thwaifo as he jumps up. Sean takes him down with an instant headshot from the Vandal. As it's going to be a B hit here, Dan. And it looks like they're going in hard with the Silver Alt over the shoulder. And BCJ, the lone man on the B side, unable to, to do anything, unfortunately, for Xset. So they're in a hell of a difficult position. Yep. Everybody coming from spawn, it's it's looking very poor considering that Exit have had plenty of time to get post spawn positioning. So they could be in market, they could be in B main, they could be in mid, they, they could have a luck of through A as far as Exit are concerned. There's just too many issues for a retake here. So they will go for the full save, especially with the operator on Pura. Makes a lot of sense. But one thing I think that's interesting in so far as the way that Genji are approaching this is Genji are playing a much more of a gambly play style in the sense that they're not that basically the presence that they show that's kind of where they're going and they don't have any lurkers on the other side of the map and typically with Genji you actually expect that Acousta would be lurking or that they would play someone on on the yeah. other side of the map to the other team but that's not happening right now so if Exet were to figure that out and start to actually play more aggressively at the early round, take A main control, take B main control, fight for those things yeah. early in the round, I think they'd get all the info they need. I mean, I bring that up and then it kind of like rings in my head. I'm like, Kusta would be firing a Roomba over off at B garage to alert, you know, come on mid and they kind of move around. We'll see. We will see. They are going for tiles once again. Kusta is going to set that turret up nice and easy no, so they can see anything from Cat or that B push, even the lurk there. Yes as well to make sure yeah turrets there do they push even more and they'll have that knowledge common drone now coming out to make sure the mid of the map is covered and i guess that's kind of the flow you'll see is if both teams are going somewhat round for round it's going to be that all right we'll get some utility out before we push we're feeling pretty equal right now and there isn't too much confidence exuded from everybody mikhail down to 15 hp to start this one off and that'll really make you reconsider what's going to happen in the round Really big problem though for for Genji because we, as we said, like they had everybody by tiles and yeah. by B lobby, so they have no control A main. And as far as they know, Exet could have pushed that. Exet didn't. I think Exet is a very strong argument that that sh should be something that they're doing in some of these rounds, but they didn't do yeah. it. So now we have a cut noise from Genji where they have allowed enough time that they could have rotated towards A. So this gets a little bit confusing now for Exit too. There is a, a timing now where Exit don't really know what's going on and they're playing retake on B and Michael gets a very important kill. That's going to tell everything run. to Exit, but I don't know how they're going to hold this. 
There's one. Pure is gonna help. He's gonna be just out of range, and now again they think about moving in. Not gonna rotate just yet. Time's ticking down. The perfect moment to head in on the lockdown comes through, and they are towards that lane side. Thwaipo's gonna be able to take one down as Kusta gets the digital molly back and to him traded. Mikhail is planting, and they should have good control over the back of the site, and Demond was able to make it into garage. Very tough retake here. The B main lurk is always going to be a problem there for GMD. That's a great first kill. Aaron, though, he senses it. He knows someone has to be there, and GMD is very, very weak. Nice headshot there from Pura. He was actually looking for that, too, and still can't get it. GMD simply too quick. Nice little jiggle coming through now. There's the showstopper ready to go. Is he going to send it? There it is. Sending it straight to the back. And our Aaron, <laughs> there we go. Aaron is going to be able to make it, it happen. Speechless. And that's just so beautiful to see. Red you got to be Bull. feeling real bad for Genji right now. A Red Bull clutch for him. We've seen the rounds where he flies out. And even if the alarm bot was going to hit him, he's got it. Transfer on that. Runs in. He thinks about the nade, but he says, no, don't want to chance it. A confidence that we're going to get in there with the showstopper. And they rock it. They even follow up uh, BCJ's Hunter's Fury and the Neural Uplink coming into this round. Good alts for Gen G, though, so don't count them out. I believe it is now 6-4 to four as we're in round 11. X at there in the lead. Oh, the Paranoia play, and Hero picks up the kill. We talked about some of that A main aggression. They're not going to go for a full take, but they'll be very happy with the pick. Meanwhile, Genji use the aggression A to be like, okay, well, there's, there can't be too many people towards mid, so we can get that for free. And so that's something taken back, yeah. but they're still down a man. Aaron, almost on that one. He's feeling a little too confident to play those positions, Dan. Kale, though, firing it onto We Did. Except's going to have to have a good retake on this site as they lose Thwaifo in the back, but it is possible in the 3v3. No post bomb positioning indeed. It's always a tough look. Drone coming through as well to tag somebody. That's often pretty dangerous. That the wall is quite bangable there. In the boathouse. Pura finding a nice angle towards that boathouse. And now it's going to be up to Sean here. Close range with the Empress there. It's going to be very helpful. Able to dismiss into a new position. Looking for another 1v1. Isolating them. But maybe not Pura. He can't be denied there with the operator. Not missing a beat. You know, Dan, I love to see Pura stepping up. The second map against FaZe, he was not having fun at all. They were shutting him down. He wasn't able to find his shots. The situations where you know you have an inside angle on someone, but somehow they're shooting you instead of your teammate first, it was that kind of day for him. To see him popping off here shows that mentality. He can just get to the next day without even thinking about what happened before and put on an amazing show. So more power to him. The rest of the team is also flowing on that side of X set, and they're putting up some good rounds here as we are in the final round of the first half. Yeah, this is this is amazing. I mean, it, it feels like Gen G. They just didn't. Their game plan isn't really working out for them. They've had to rely on more gambly plays, and it's yeah. it's not been a lot of fun. X set have been finding a lot of comfort, and we'll see the drone coming through from A main. And the BCJ is going to be seeing that there's nobody here right now. It doesn't mean that they can't retake it, though. It depends on their pacing. And they're actually speeding things up towards Catwalk right now. And, we, you know, we talked about Exit stacking towards certain parts of the map right now. And they're, they're definitely stacked towards B. But the push is going to come towards A. Patience is a virtue, Dan. <laughs> Always. One minute on this one. Oh! The tagger was one. Everybody's getting scattered. Wynn goes in. The double knife. The triple knife from Wynn for the win. And they are going to easily have a... What was that? That was sick. That's what that, that's what that was from Wynn. Beautiful stuff there. He's looking for the ace now. I think he knows who the last player is, but... I think we're all rooting for him at this point. Win with a, such an excellent round. Sean's going to take it away, but... Beautiful play from the jet. You know, that's that's what you want to see. Is it's that explosiveness, the X factor coming in for Gen G to get a 5-7 half. It was a difficult half, but now they yeah. can now they can figure out about it and just move on to the defensive side where things will be very different. Wow.
I love that too. Just he's like, hit me with it. I don't care. I'm gonna be I'm <laughs> full in. Sean coming up over the shoulder. That's a great round, especially to come back on when you're when you're down in the half to start off the next half. You know, pistol round, you get a little bit of momentum in there. They're feeling good. And we'll see how they carry this out. Gen G now to see what they can do here, stopping the offensive tactics of XSAT. And what sort of pace will we see here from Exit on the attack? Not looking too quick at the moment, just clearing B main control. Creating some pressure. Again, defenders often might want to get aggressive somewhere. Catwalk's a great one because it allows you to kind of deal with everything. You get information, you're able to have fast rotations, yeah. and you can you can always be helpful for your team. So we'll, we'll see that cat aggression coming from Genji on the defense. Now the, the game's been given away, though, because Sean's going to spot the push coming through B main, but it's been slowed down here by this Nano Swarm, and that's a huge problem for x -Set. Getting that dismiss allowed him to get out. Such a risky position to play there, knowing they could be rushing, but he's feeling comfy. You can tell what that says about Sean right now. He moves in again. The rest of the team giving him some help there as Kusta there next to Switch. Oh, God! Hits him with a fan right in the face. Are you serious? There's a shot from Sean. Still alive, still pumping. That's a 3K for him. Nice hold <laughs> comes through. And it, it's so, as you say, like the, the combination of having that forward position, winning that first battle. That's why you need to get, you know, your most skillful players on, or mechanically gifted players on arena. You get that first kill, dismiss away, slows the push down. Nano Swarm gets popped, and the rotation is fully in for the defenders, giving them all of the advantages. Such a great round. All right, how do they do it next? This is gonna be that save over on the side of X set. Sean. Giving him the what for on that first round. And there's going to be a call that there's a little love for mid. And no sight on that means Genji probably going to play a little bit more reserved here to just get those frags as the close corners come to fruition. I like this. You know, you lose the sight, but you just say, okay, you guys can have the sight. We'll take a main control. So yep. you're going to have a very hard time, but maybe not. <laughs> Aaron is going in there. One looks like Michael's going to be able to deal with that quite nicely. And it looks like there's a lot of potential, positionally speaking, for Xset to make some things happen. Mm -hmm. It's just BCJ. This is a very low player, but looks like Michael with the swing is going to get it done. Seven to seven. And we're all tied up here on Ascent. This is the first map of this series. This is an elimination situation for these teams as well in the lower bracket. So yep. a lot on the line here at Masters 1. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of pressure. This is Gen G's pick as well, Xset choosing defense. So Xset doing quite well. They did their homework, probably figuring that Gen G would pick this. It's, excuse me, Xset's second most played map competitively. So not too shabby there. They're going to have something in the strap book to get themselves to these sites. Uh, it's it's seeing how the site hold and host plants go right now. Like you said seven to seven. You gotta love games that go punch for punch, and we'll see if that happens here in the second half. A little bit of a push in by Pure and the rest of the team. It seems like a full committal over here onto that A site, and there isn't too much aggression coming out on the side of uh, Gen G's B. So they're not really grabbing that info, but you also have to consider this camera's up here, and they can see everything that's going on. So Xset feels comfortable. Very tense situation. You may expect a contact play, and just like there it is, Pure will be able to trade onto Michael. They don't necessarily know that GMD's right around the corner. Dropping another smoke. Going into the smoke, Pure is going to happily deal with that one as he dashes forwards, trying to take more space for the team towards three. And Exhead are setting it home right now. As there's nothing that Genji can do. They keep going for the challenges, but they are losing everyone. Sean is left. And he's going for a very desperate play. Straight forward onto the site, almost making it look doable with the frenzy, but Xset will shut it down. Eight to seven. Uh, I love watching Sean play. That just the Sean way, you know? It's like you're gonna have to hit that site fast enough that you're catching everybody still on their current angle. And imagine this. if that gun had dropped down off Jenny and he has it. What a different story, but yeah. I, I always love that fast paced play where you're just trying to hit everybody the moment they aren't looking. It requires some damn good aim. We'll see what happens though. X set still on top of it. Their aim is the one that's hitting through for this last round. And now we're on a double gun round. Actually, we're gonna see Aaron on that Spectre, but he does have full util, so that's what he's deciding. That's gonna be a little bit more of a priority. 
Kale takes a bit of spam damage there as it looks to be finally a spread here. Xset's going to say, hey, let's see if we can start toying with them. We'll get a little bit of rotation towards B in a 3-2 split cross map, but they have to be careful about their mid info and how long they don't have that. And yeah, Michael, using the drone to get some additional information and seeing a jet, seeing jet there in that cubby is yeah. quite a tell. So we'll see what the response is from both teams. If Gen G were looking like they, or others, if Exit were looking like they wanted to actually go for a push there, they have time to sort of reset out. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Gen G not really caring too much, just holding on to pretty basic safe positioning on their defense. And they're, they're feeling that slower pace from Exit, so they're not they're trying not to jump to any conclusions just now. No more charges left. With that said, the drone will be spotted coming out from BCJ in mid which is a tell that they are trying to take some mid control, of course. Yeah. So we'll start to see x working on left. a completion to the round now. Like it, 3-2 to a full mid. Distraction, no follow-up is close enough. They can't close the gap like the last packs do, and they're finally getting into that spike site. Oh, Kale standing. taking down Sean in the accidental friendly fire. Pure is going to take advantage of a bit more open space in the site. A perfect thing for Jet to do. Not enough time to plant. Looking for maybe a few more frags to damage the eco, and it's just going to be about point too late on that one, I believe. Oh, got it. Don't try to do math on stream. Nice, three, <laughs> nice 300 grabbed. It looked like he got it down at like 389. And it was just going to be off. But it was over four seconds. That's what's Thanks. required. And they're going to give it over here to Mikhail. Get another all point on the board. Yeah, that was really close. He was, if just maybe like one more second for to reposition, maybe Piro has the opportunity to do something there. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, eight to eight. We were all tied up. And... Taking stock of the, the money situation, we'll see both teams in with purchases. And Exet not really looking as good. No. Win on that operator is certainly going to be interesting. We can see that he's going to take a peek on Catwalk to start things off. And we can we can also see that Exet are looking to maybe go for a fast play into this A site. But Gen G, I think, will have a, a lot to defend this with because they're stacked towards the A side of the map. And that's a fast play. Instant Jenny kill on Acousta as they fire out the Hunter's Fury. And they're flying into sight, and it's causing a bit of rotation here from Xset. Look at the rotation around from uh, G or Gen G here. You do have Sean just on the flank, and that may come up big. Spike planted. All stuck on the sights for Xset. It's going to be a tough hold. Gen G trying to set up around it. Sean did the smart thing. He broke the trip, so he's suggesting that there's a flank, but he's yep. going to help his teammates come out of tree towards that site position. There's the showstopper coming through just to buy time here from Arian. We'll have to see if that's going to come into play now as the rest of uh, Gen G start to make their way forward. It's Michael with a double, and it's looking phenomenal right now for Gen G's retake. What is this, though, from Arian? Jumping up, taking all the power away from him oh in my a God. high ground position. BCJ by hell will get taken down. It's all up to Aaron, but he can't finish it off. Oh, these rounds, Dan. They're so awesome to watch. Everybody's making split decision plays at the last moment. You're, you're basically getting swarmed, blast packing out of the situation, knowing you're about to take shots from your six. Aaron gets up, gets two, has to turn around with insta fights, knowing that BCJ is stuck underneath with a stinger at that moment. Well, these rounds are hectic, and Gen G is doing a great job of sourcing out where the problem is to keep the round in their favor. Another one for them there as they take the lead here in this match. Yeah, it's looking pretty crazy right now, and I'm still waiting for Win to get like an opening pick here. This might be the round as. There is more mid presence early on, and Wynn is looking for it and can't quite find it, but Sean certainly will. A quick double as he just mows them down from mid to top mid, and that's awful for Xed. Someone has to come up with something big. This is a three versus five this early on. It's, it just comes down to at this point for Xed, somebody making a huge play. It, it really is as simple as that. We yep. did want it to be that man, but unfortunately, he couldn't find that opening pick he was looking for. and. More info for Gen G getting the spot with the drone in mid. And that stings. He's <laughs> weed is down to 31 HP there. He says, ah, sacrificial lamb. I'll go first. See if I can find anything here on that mid area.
You, they do have good uh, good utility to find someone, maybe single out a kill here with creating a smoke to get themselves entry to a site, but it's going to be tough. They're finding just about all the utility still available and ready out in a site from Kusta and the rest of the team ready to come back in. Quick dart to make sure they do have movement on this. That's the Wifo's alt, but maybe just a point for BCJ left. here if they want to capitalize on a bit more advantage of the round. Yeah, he'll grab that for the Hunter's Fury. Well, looks like they're just going to hold on to their guns at this point. <laughs> Thanks for the orb. Bye. Yeah, very. it's always so difficult when you lose a couple players early on. On, on the attack. There's, there's very little you can do mm -hmm. because you have to gain space. And normally, you know, gaining space, let's say position towards the site or the site itself, that, there comes a cost normally, a cost of players, utility, yeah. um, to get that position. It's the trade. And so when you're down to three players and they have five left, well, it's uh, it's not a good good tra trading situation. So, ten to eight for Gen G. Definitely looking like they are stabilizing at this point. The mid aggression has been phenomenal, and Exit are on the back foot here. Exit have to change something. I feel like this map's going to be. You know, every map is important. But with Haven coming up next, we've seen a lot of teams just get turned around on Haven and it not go their way. Being such a diverse map, all sites. So. This one coming down to the wire is going to mean a lot here in this best of series. As we said, Bind, one of the better maps for Xset, going to be the last one here. If they make it to the best of three, but they've practiced them all. That's not to say they can only Bind. We see this great match here on Ascent as they continue to take rounds off of Gen G there in the first half. But now, seem to fall. Gen G's aggression is just online at the moment. Oh, so much information there with that drone, but. We have Exit now trying to speed things up. They know that Genji have a great idea as to what's happening. And Genji, they're completely set up to defend this. They are in ideal positions. And it doesn't look like Exit has really an answer for those positions. As we'll get Weeder getting a frag on to Michael. And the trace come through from Wifo. But still, it's going to be a hell of a task to get the spike, which is down by spawn, and then get to a planting position when he's got 72 HP. And Win and Sean know exactly where he is. Slow play. Can't really fake too much of a fight here. I don't think anybody's going to buy that you're shooting at somebody and then they peek out to get left. you. It's all just whether you pass their angle right now on contact. I have retrieved the spike. Quick grab of the spike from distance. And I'm sure Sean can notice the, the edge of the spike gone. No, it doesn't seem like he's left his angle at all. 18 seconds. Good, good amount of time here. This close to the site for Twifo to work with. Camera usage that they did left. here, so they know he's somewhere within range. And that's the drop into sight, Dan. This is going to make it tough. One enemy remaining. Oh, he's got to find the next one in time. He knows his boathouse. Can he find the headshot? He's free wildly. No! He's got to find it in time, though. Oh, man. Oh, he actually does get the kill, which is great. That is a big kill. But, uh, yeah, that, that was a tough spot. Just like you said, I mean, he got everything he could get out of it, really. 11 to 8 in favor of Gen G. Definitely a great defense. Again, that drone, the timing. And it, this is one of those things too, when you have a good read on your opponent's pacing when they're on the attacking side, yeah. and you can get that information at that key moment when you can just like that one piece of info tells you absolutely everything, then the defenders suddenly have a huge advantage. And that was what BCJ was able to, or rather, sorry, um, uh, Michael was able to do for Genji. That all door focus again. Is that Mikhail's? Seems like they'll be focusing it quite a bit just to make sure they can get it's back online with how they fire. Not Mikhail, sorry, that was uh, BCJ. And now they move into A. Ooh, fast plant on this one, knowing that to just sit outside, garrison A main, and try to fire back in with the utility that they have. Great job pushing Gen.G back. How did they react on an immediate plant round? Wiper for the very late lurk. Showstopper from... Aaron is going to... Oh, that's that's huge. Kusa had a lockdown. I think he was going to place that lockdown. It might not matter, though, yep, because yep. the rest of Kusa's teammates are just forcing the issue, getting the kills. Four versus two here for them as Exet are in a very, very bad position. BCJ in the dark cover. It's going to come down to great timing. With the DS1 down to BCJ. And, well, he won't be able to find anything. Dan, 12 rounds now for Genji. You said it perfectly. 
you know, considering the timing of the round, Spike being planted, and where a Killjoy would be at that time, that wasn't a, a blind, Match this point. is going to be someone. That was the Killjoy position. And then for, for Gen G to be able to say, all right, it's it's guns blazing then, that was pretty awesome uh, that they kind of just had that in their back pocket and it didn't set, set them back. 12 to 8, game point here on our first map before we move on to Haven in this best of three lower bracket series. Both teams going to be fighting for their life here in the NA Valorant Masters Tournament. And they uh, they have another map to go through. This one not over yet. Four more rounds for X. That brings us into overtime. And they're going to be kind of on a uh, semi-purchase here. Utility is not all around for them. We'll see how they play out this round. With two down already. Deja vu, Dan. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's hard enough that the ult advantage is usually in favor of Genji. They didn't even have to play aggressively at all. They could just try to play the retake game and just use that utility, the Hunter's Fury and the Lockdown to massive retake ultimates to, to, to play passively, but they're confident. And that's a scary reality. And Win, he's working on the ace right now. Four kills for him as he looks to finish this one off in start. I wouldn't be surprised to see the daggers come out indeed. And him just try to charge down we did. They might even try to knife him. Look, oh, oh no, this is just the worst thing possible for we did. Know exactly where he is. Oh, there's the ace to finish off the first map from win. 13 to 8, and Gen G are looking fantastic. After what was a difficult first half, they've really put everything together going into the second. Aim came online. Everybody, nobody was second guessing any of their angles, and we saw a lot of those strats pressuring Gen G, kind of diversifying how they would play, how they would defense, or how they would play defense. So Xset did a great job of that. They played a good game as well. I can't wait to see what map two is. But Gen G in this second half, you had your rounds from Win, the rest of the team coming up behind him, and you just couldn't stop it. it that's when Gen G's online, and I think that's what a lot of people saw getting them into this tournament. Yeah, and it seemed like Exit just couldn't really find the value from the way this, that they were trying to default and open up the, the map. They never were able to really condition Gen G and, and really find those early to mid rounds wins that could then, you know, you could then convert into just let's say we have more information, you have no information, and we can just play the rotations and just win like that. Like that, that kind of scenario that's more typical, of, especially in Ascent, wasn't really the case. Gen G always found ways to stay, uh, you know, in, in, the, in every part of the round, taking the initiative, finding those frags, challenging positions, you know, winning the fights, looking like they're powering up as, yeah. as time went on, which is definitely a bad prospect for Exit going into the next map, but we'll see. It is a new map, of course, so it will be definitely, you know, a, a case of them just resetting and yeah. you might see a, a very different com uh, composition from them too. They've got a lot in their playbook. And the new, next map selected by Xset as well. Uh, you'll see Xset actually on defense too, starting this one, if, if that's correct, on the map sheet. Uh, usually the other team uh, will get themselves to D. But either case, we'll see it. The first map being Gen G's, I, they must feel so comfortable on that on that defensive side. We saw the retakes being quite strong, whether they had the utility or not in the first place. And looking at the rest of the team and how they played, Sean coming up huge. Kusta did what he could on that on the uh, the Killjoy, but I did I did see the lack of kind of aggression from Gen G that we would have seen on their attacking side. I think Xset was able to prey off of that. So. Good to see Xset iterate and do what they can to get back into these games. We're going up to the next map in just a few minutes. That's going to be Haven for NA Valorant Masters. Don't go anywhere. There's more games to come. the best. That's why we start with 5G from America's most reliable network. Verizon 5G is next level. Then give families plans to mix and match so you only pay for what you need starting at $35. You get so much more than this a great network. And offer the best in entertainment on select unlimited plans like Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, as well as Discovery Plus with a Galaxy S21 Plus 5G when you buy one. There's no reason to settle for less than the best. Only from Verizon. Let's go.
Apply now at RedBullCampusClutch.com.